That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Jason David Frank. Boom shakalaka. Please do not change channel. Welcome back. I'm GW Palmer. You're watching the Hanging With Web Show. We are at MegaCon Tampa Bay at the Tampa Bay Convention Center. We're here all weekend long. We've been hanging out with authors, artists, cosplayers, musicians, filmmakers, creative minds of all kinds. Right now, we're hanging out with comic creator Dwight, comic creators, plural. My card is wrong. That's what happens. <laughs> Dwight and Rebecca McPherson. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. Over. We appreciate it. All right. Y'all are the creators of, among other things, we have here the Imaginary Voyages of Edgar Allan Poe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's a mouthful. It's a long title. It is. And, and it, it's cool because I'm getting a nice comic y vibe here off of this. Yes. Um, Edgar Allan Poe. You're the internet. You should know this. That you have Google. Edgar Allan Poe is noted for his, his for being one of the darkest classic yes. literature uh, writers. Sure. Um, and you've you've kind of given him a little bit more of a. He's still dark, by the way. Uh, but he's a little more friendly. He's a little more for a younger audience. It looks like he is. Uh, it's an all ages title. Okay. And uh, the gist of it is that Edgar Allan Poe has been through the loss of his wife, and he's suffered a traumatic incident and his personality has been fractured and we're, we're buying all of this by the yes. way yes <laughs> and so he withdraws into this dream world where he goes on this quest that's fueled by his love of mythology and uh fairy tales so, so this, this is fairy nice, tale this world. is an explore this is a, a, a comic exploration of edgar Allan poe's mind Absolutely. Yes, Which yes. we all know is a scary place to be anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, but this looks like a fun, scary place to be. Yes. It's scary cool. It's scary, scary cool. Scary yes. Cool. I yes. like that. <laughs> you just coined a new internet phrase. Break the there internet. We go. That's Hashtag. what we're saying. Hashtag <laughs> scary, scary cool. cool. We just made that shit up. Y'all are going to buy it too. Um, all right. Cool. Now, see, we were uh, kind of looking a little bit at what was on the table inside yes. and, and looking at what the stuff you do. So you're doing all ages kind of young adult uh, comics, yes. much of the way, you know, YA authors are doing, you know, uh, mm -hmm. larger literary works. Right. Right? Yes. Um, but we also know you do a lot with historical characters. I do. I, you have I a passion for that? that? I that love a... historical fiction. And uh -huh. one thing that we found that we can do with YA stuff that's based on historical fiction is that we can get it into the hands of teachers or we can get it into the hands of students. And that's really where our passion is, is to, you know, to inspire the, you know, young creators, yes. whether they be writers or artists, but just, uh, you know, spark that imagination to, yeah. uh, and, and yeah. also to explore the characters. We've had uh, several children that have written to us said, man, I learned so much about Edgar Allan Poe, and there's so much more to him than just the scary stories. He also yeah. wrote comedies. Oh, yeah. I you know, he was a great satirist. Uh, he's, Poe was, is fantastic. Is, uh, I, it makes is a good inspiration for young people yes. in literature. Yes. He had a, a wide body of work. Absolutely. He had a very, especially for his time, he wasn't writing the dark and dank of his day. He was writing imaginary characters and imaginary worlds, and he really did. It was a really bright, comparatively to when you look at the era that Poe existed in. Right. His, it's actually brighter than reality. You know, I really, Dickens is harder to read because it's oh, yeah. real yes. dark. It's, it's, it's like right. daily street dark. Daily struggle sure. of life, and, yeah. and, you know, Poe dove into sort of the deeper issues of, of people, sure. but he did it in a very creative and imaginary world. And, you know, so this is, it's cool that the kids get to know that. Because yeah. I didn't know that till college. <laughs> All I knew about Poe until college was, wow, that scares the hell out of me. Because yeah. that's the classic stuff. The right. stuff that we all know, the raven, right. and, you know, then you get to college and you realize there's a whole person un underneath there. Yes. There's a, there's a real very complex yes. person. 
And and that's what writers do. We tell our own mm-hmm. truth. We tell what sure. the human truths are right. from our perspective. And Poe did that really well. Yes, he did. And so. he introduced us to the corners of our mind that we weren't really aware of. Yeah. Right. He examined those dark corners. I think this, uh, you know, we all know we're there. They're, they're for all of us. Uh-huh. We deal with death. We all deal with death. And during that time, they dealt with death quite a bit more because there are things the that we have cares for now. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So it, it's something we all eventually have to wrestle with, and that's death. Many, 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 many years from now. It's yes. great to live in the new millennium. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You just did a cover reveal recently for the Houdini kit. I did. It's it's called uh, Houdini so what, Silver Dollar Misfits. What, and now, I, we just talked about what brings you into Poe's world and what, what you guys like about that. Houdini. <laughs> Houdini is He's a, another fun guy, by the way. Guys, Google guy. that. You just he Google Houdini. He's super complex. Yeah, he's another if character. If you actually look into Houdini himself, I mean, the man came from nothing. He was an immigrant, and he became one of the most popular people in the world. He yeah. became a rock star, and it was totally by PR, by doing daring things that no one would think of. <laughs> the man was friends with people. H.P. Lovecraft, era, he was friends era, with. In the era that we live in today, we live in a real era of celebrity. Oh, yeah. yes. Social media. Um, but can you imagine, it's so rare for when you get boil it down Houdini was a man of many 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 talents he and many gifts absolutely but at his core as an entertainer he was cl- classified classically as a magician yeah right that's what he's imagine going for. rising mm-hmm. to the level of rock star <laughs> in that particular entertainment field I know it yes. really is it boggles Very your unique, mind it know, does for that time it really does. does I mean now you yeah. think we have yes. two or three of those guys we've got like Chris Angel and you know right exactly David Copperfield very very David few David Copperfield yeah. David Copperfield yeah. but Houdini was the first he, he rose right. from he yes. took that art mm-hmm. to the level where it was the equivalent of you know be, being a Rolling Stone in the 60s yes right. and he did right. that yeah, he did. with magic right and, uh, and the escape arts things like that um, tell us about the title of the cover reveal well, the the book is interesting because I, yeah, <laughs> they all are. Um, that's just me. Uh, I I created a book called Kid Who Dreams. Dwayne McPherson, the king of understatement. Uh, yeah, boom, there it is. <laughs> hashtag that now. Okay, we're making the hashtags. Uh, I actually created a book called Kid Houdini and the Silver Dollar Misfits in 2007, and it it was well received awesome and I my phone started ringing off the hook people in Hollywood saying we want to make a film out of this all right it didn't happen (laughs) and uh, the reasoning that I was given was that it was a period piece it was actually set back in the the late 1800s I know in the parlance of Hollywood period doing a period piece is expensive expensive, it is and it is a risk and it's a risk, yeah. You have a lot of money <laughs> yeah. in old cars and old clothes and, and whole, sets, yes. period. Yeah. And then, and it, will they like it? Won't they like it? You know, right. it's, it's actually probably in today's world easier to CGI an entire galaxy oh, yeah. than it is That's to build a, a brick building right. from the 40s. Or, well, they couldn't know. have done Fantastic Beasts if it came first. You had That's to know true. about Harry Potter in order to do a period piece. Right. Exactly. Right. So, well, so I said, okay, let's bring it into the 21st century. Nice. Well, how do you bring Harry Houdini into the 21st century when he died, you know? So I said, hmm, I put on my thinking cap and I came up with a very original idea. But I, I'm not going to tell you. You have to read the book. You have to read the book. There is an original idea. That's all you get to know. There is. You got to go to the links below, click, yes. get the book. Right. Then you'll know Absolutely. more. And then you'll be calling Hollywood going, yes, we want Let's this. Let's do this. Let's do yeah. this, right? Hashtag make this film. <laughs> Boom. There it is. Another one. We knocked it out of the park. Um, so, Rebecca, you're hanging out with this guy. He's hanging got this, this guy, weird you know? imagination. Do you story? ever just think you're just, in, you just, how did I get to this crazy place? You know what? Our story is actually very unique as he is unique itself. I was working in Hollywood as an independent producer of theater and film. Wow. And at that time, I was doing PR for some of the Lord of the Ring actors. And they went to a comic convention. So I got in, involved in a comic convention there. And I started working at a comic store. And I bought his comic, Dead Men Tell No Tales. And so I contacted the, the publisher to see That's if the love rights at first have been bought. Love at first yeah. read, baby. Love first read, the production. But I, I um, called his publisher to see if the rights had been sold to it. Uh-huh. And a year later, we kept talking. And another year later, we were married. And here we are. 
Yeah. So that's a story in itself, Hollywood. You can make a be film out of a story. What you read. I know. That's what Rebecca's you buy. story. Be careful Stay away what from you the pirate section of the store. <laughs> that's right. You never know. You walk in for a comic book. You All walk I want to do is read a book. And next go. thing and I three know, kids. And three, three kids. kids. And three kids. <laughs> three three boys. kids. Three boys. There was a sale that day. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I'm you get a comic book, a husband, three kids. Boom. It's all there. No refunds. No refunds. I hear, uh, we're here at Megacon Tampa Bay. Yes. You know, one of the great things we love about being in the convention circuit is the fact that as artists ourselves, as creative minds, mm -hmm. we're not just creators on this side of the table, we're also fans. And I hear you had kind of a fanboy moment this weekend. Oh my gosh. Uh -oh. Yes, I did. Uh -oh. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> You know, back in the 80s, kids, it, it was tough being was a fat Back in my day. Okay, yeah, being back in my day. <laughs> it was tough. And it was we want to remind everybody out there that what you guys know today yeah, of con like culture. Yeah. Um, it was so unheard of. We were subculture, not pop culture. Right. right. Exactly. Now we're pop culture. We were subculture right. then. Yes. We were the guys you were stuffing into lockers, and these were the places right. that they were opening the lockers and letting us out. Right. Yeah. I so know. if you watch Goonies, I was the you know the kid that you know about the, uh, <laughs> the, the baby Ruth in the swimming pool. That was me. Okay. Uh, so we were looking for thing, anything really to to look forward to. You know, something to make yeah. us feel better about yeah. ourselves. And I discovered this comic book called Nexus which is uh, created by Mike Barron and Steve Rude. And I just, it connected wow. with me. And I was able to finally meet Mike Barron and Steve Rude face to face. Wow. And it was just like. Now you've had uh, a good career as a writer now. Yeah. It's, been, it's been a while now, it's right? 10 years, 10 about years. 10 years. So um, for all you out there, you know, I know you think if you're a creative artist, like we all know each other. No. 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 And we have heroes. No. Yes. And we have yes, guys that we, we looked do. up for. You Absolutely. Know, look out for and and <laughs> that drive us. Yes. Right. So here you are, ten years into your career. Yeah. You're doing well. You wrote the boying over. And now you're fanboying. <laughs> you're right there oh sharing space and you're looking over going, dude, is that yeah. whoa. That's cool. Right. That's a cool oh. moment. I it, looked it, on there and I knew they were I looked on the website, I knew they were gonna be there. I said, Oh yeah. Oh man. I can hardly wait. <laughs> I've talked to Mike Barron, you know, through social media for about ten years, but Steve Rude's kind of harder to get a, a hold of, and mm -hmm. so to actually be able to give him a hug and say thank you, you know, but, you know for your for, artwork, which For is fans amazing. out there on the web, remember this. Uh, we do. We, get, we owe a lot to everyone that comes before. Absolutely. And, and if you love this stuff, if you love the imaginary voyages of Edgar Allan Poe, then it owes its roots to somewhere, somewhere, not just absolutely. the recesses of your mind, right. Right. Oh, but yes. to oh, the inspiration that you had. Absolutely. And that, that makes those fanboy moments that much more special yes. because <laughs> this is what comes from that. Absolutely. Exactly. Right? Because exactly. it all leads, be inspired. The, the motto on the show has always been create, aspire to great things, and inspire others to do exactly. the same. And that's what you're doing here. Yes, Every time a kid I picks do. this up and realizes, yeah, you know, you can find, we talk about this at 4 o'clock today. There's a panel downstairs on comics in the classroom. Oh, awesome. Oh, wow. And we talk about the idea that um, you can take literary topics and present them in a way that will excite young people mm -hmm. and Absolutely. make fans of literature for life. Right. Um, yes. And we, we, yes. One of, we know what we talk about the metaphor that are, we come from our classic superheroes and things like that. Right. And we also talk about the fact that you can also tell the story of classic literature yes, through comics Absolutely. and classic characters. And I have no, I've yet to see a story that didn't owe its roots to H.G. Wells or oh, to, yeah. these, the, to the classic yes, literature. Yes. We owe <laughs> the father so of us all. So much, I know. And those of us who are on YouTube running shows and things like that, thank you, P.T. Barnum for teaching us how to <laughs> milk it as far as we could and just create the hashtags. Uh, all right, she's going to wave that card. Where are you going next? Where, going Where are you guys going to be from here? Oh. oh, my goodness. We're in a bit of a holding pattern because um, the Poe books that we have right now are actually being shopped around. I have a literary speak. agent. So have Look, that's agent. a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> sentence, by the way. Yes. So, yes, yes and, and we're also writing because if we don't write, we don't sell. <laughs> so we, right. 
Artists have to create <laughs> have before to create. you can buy. <laughs> right. It, it, there is a process. You gotta take I, the time to write. <laughs> I am uh, six months into my next book. That you have oh, to do okay. it. Yeah. And, so it's, and yeah. it was it was in my mind, and I outlined it in my my mind. It was a four month project. Oh my goodness. But then I'm doing the show, and we're coming to the conventions, and we're selling, and we're doing. Yes. And so right. I, I'm six months into my four month project with at least four months to go. That's right. You know, so it is. It's a hard. It's a hard place to so live. That's where we are. That's the shut up card. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> That's the card that says, Garrett, you're talking too much and you're visiting. I love We're going to do that. We're going to say thank you to our partners and our friends, though. It's something unique magazine out of St. Louis, Missouri. Those are our first sponsors. They share our videos all over the web. We love oh, them for it. Space Coast Comics, Famous Faces and Funnies, Rick Shea and the team down there. Talk about a comic shop with an expertise. Oh, when you oh, walk in, it doesn't matter who you talk okay. to there. They know what you're looking for. That's They're awesome. fans. Awesome. And that makes it. a great experience awesome. when, you, yeah, when you're sure. shopping. Yvonne Mason at Off the Chain Radio. Pound the Grape in Melbourne, Florida and embellish effects. Great cosplay thing. Cosplay Michael loves it over there. You can walk <laughs> in as you and walk out as somebody else. Oh, yeah. It's a great place to go. Gotta We've been it. hanging with Dwight and Rebecca McPherson here at MegaCon Tampa Bay. <laughs> Guys, check out the links down below. Find a link so you can get the imaginary voyages of Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, you can also find out about uh, Houdini Kid. Oh, was yes. He? Kid, yes. Kid Houdini. Kid Houdini, sorry. I <laughs> Hocus Pocus Comics. Just look at the links. Yeah. <laughs> we made it easy for you. Easier for you than it is for me. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> All right, guys, check them out. Check out White Rebecca McPherson online. You're looking forward to seeing what gets shopped around? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Keep She's giving me that little thing, sing symbol there. I, <laughs> guys, remember, stay tuned in, stay logged on, and see who we're hanging with next. Thank you guys so much for coming. No, thank really you. Thanks. Oh, my God.